so children we had studied in the previous class about the effect of revolution so now today in uh, today's class we will be studying about solstice and equinox now all of us know that the orbit of the earth around the sun is elliptical or oval in shape the positions of the earth in each of the four seasons shows the seasons are reversed between the two hemispheres due to the inclination of the earth's axis when the northern hemisphere experiences summer the southern hemisphere experiences winter that is because during summer the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun and the southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun so we see seasonal changes all right because of revolution and because of the inclination of the earth's axis different seasons are created now on march 21st if you see the rays of the sun fall vertically at the equator then as the earth continues to revolve when it reaches june 21st position the rays of the sun fall vertically at the tropic of cancer then on september 23rd again what happens is that the rays of the sun they fall vertically at the equator then as the earth continues to revolve what happens is in december position the especially on 22nd december the rays of the sun fall vertically at the tropic of capricorn so this is how the position of the earth keeps on changing with respect to the sun which results in different seasons so today we'll study about solstice and equinox now children we need to know an important term in geography that is the circle of illumination you can see this word is written here in the diagram the circle of illumination is an imaginary line that separates the lighted part of the earth from the darkened part so i'll be giving you the definition also now because of revolution and because of the inclination of the earth's axis there is a difference in the length of day and night and there are different seasons at the same time so over here in this diagram if you see when the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun the days over there are longer and as we move towards the north pole the length of the day keeps on increasing and beyond the arctic circle the sun never sets for 6 months now uh as we move from the equator towards the south pole what happens is that the days become shorter and shorter and beyond the antarctic circle the sun never rises for 6 months so this is how the tilt of the earth's axis is responsible for the difference in length of day and night so first let us study about the equinox so children the word equinox actually means equal nights so the equinox is takes place twice a year on march 21st and september 23rd so on march 21st which is called the spring or the vernal equinox so during this time the angle of the sun's rays is 90 degree at the equator in other words on march 21st the altitude of midday sun or the angle of incidence of the sun's rays is 90 degree meaning that the sun is overhead at the equator now in this diagram if you see you can very clearly see that the circle of illumination cuts through all the lines of latitude equally so the circle of illumination passes through the poles therefore the duration of day is 12 hours at all places on the earth therefore these days are known as equinoxes meaning equal nights and therefore equal days so 
uh, do on March 21st. It is the spring season in the northern hemisphere. This equinox is referred to as the vernal equinox. So the altitude of the sun or the altitude of midday sun is 90 degree at the equator. Now this diagram shows the position of earth on September 23rd. So on September 23rd, the rays of the sun fall vertically at the equator. All the places have equal days and equal nights. It is autumn in the northern hemisphere and spring in the southern hemisphere. So September 23rd is also referred to as the autumnal equinox. So on this day again, the rays of the sun fall vertically at the equator. So the altitude of the midday sun is 90 degree at the equator. Away from the equator, the altitude of the sun decreases gradually. So I hope you have understood what equinox actually means. Now we will study about the solstice. So the word solstice is derived from the Latin word which means the sun standing still. Now first on March 21st the rays of the sun fall vertically at the equator. Now as the earth continues to revolve around the sun then what happens is that the rays of the sun gradually become vertical towards the Tropic of Cancer. So on June 21st, the rays of the sun fall vertically at the Tropic of Cancer. Then as the earth continues to revolve, then comes the September 23rd position when the rays of the sun fall vertically at the equator and then comes December when the rays of the sun fall vertically at the Tropic of Capricorn. Alright, so now we'll study about the two solstices in detail. So on June 21st, which is the summer solstice, the rays of the sun fall vertically on the Tropic of Cancer, meaning that the altitude of midday sun or the angle of incidence of the sun at the Tropic of Cancer is 90 degree. So the North Pole is tilted towards the sun. The Northern Hemisphere has the longest day and the shortest night. And the day is of 24 hours beyond the Arctic Circle as you can see in the diagram. The duration of light goes on increasing from the equator towards the North Pole. So the length of the day increases from 12 hours at the equator to 24 hours at the North Pole. The light lasts for six months at the North Pole. It is summer in the Northern Hemisphere and it is winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Now in this diagram, if you see, as we move from the equator towards the South Pole, the duration of the day goes on decreasing. All right, towards the South Pole. Now the altitude of midday sun as I told you, is 90 degree at the Tropic of Cancer. And it goes on decreasing as we move towards the South Polar regions. So children, the region beyond the Arctic Circle, especially Norway, is known as the land of midnight sun because the sun does not rise or set. So at the North Pole, there will be six months of daylight. The sun will be seen always above the horizon at a low angle. So, the, in Nor Norway, there is a place called Hammerfest. It is a place of tourist attraction for observing the phenomena of midnight sun. This place has continuous daylight from 13th May to 29th July. This place is easily accessible to tourists and has hotels and other facilities. So the view of midnight sun is very very enthralling and a lot of tourists go there to see the midnight sun. So on December 22nd,
the sun's rays fall vertically on the tropic of capricorn the northern hemisphere has the shortest day and the longest night and in the southern hemisphere the december 22nd is the longest day and the shortest night so the day is of 24 hours beyond the antarctic circle as you can see in the diagram the duration of light goes on increasing from 12 hours at the equator to 24 hours at the south pole the light lasts for 6 months at the south pole it is summer in the southern hemisphere so on december 22nd the rays of the sun fall vertically at the tropic of capricorn it makes an angle of 90 degree meaning that the altitude of midday sun is 90 degree or the sun is overhead at the tropic of capricorn